Dead Frontier 2. Is this an MMO? In this video, we're gonna take a look at Dead Frontier 2 and determine if this is an MMO. And of course, we're gonna do that by doing some gameplay, we're gonna check out the cash up, the monetization, the features, and we're gonna do a Dead Frontier 2 gameplay from the beginning to show you guys what it's like playing the game from the start. Dead Frontier 2 is a zombie game to say the least. And with that said, let's do this. Welcome back, Saviors GH here. Before we play the game and determine if this is an MMO or not, first, let's read how the developers describe the game. Let's go to Steam and read the description. Dead Frontier 2 is an online survival horror at its darkest. As one of the few survivors of the outbreak, you must scratch a living out of the decaying ruins of society, scavenge for supplies, improve your skills, and trade with other players, all the while keeping your eyes peeled for the infected lurking around every corner. Okay, there's no mention of MMO on the Steam page, so how about let's Google it. And there it goes, DeadFrontier2.com, an online survival horror MMO. And there goes the description. As you see there, the developers are calling it an MMO. And going back to the Steam page and looking at its tag, it's labeled as MMORPG. It's released on July 15, 2019 on Steam, and it's developed by Creaky Corpse, which is a UK-based game development company. So with all that info, we can't really determine if this is a passable MMO or not. And guys, I haven't played the game. And you're probably seeing a gameplay right there. It's because of the power of editing. As I was recording this, I haven't played the game. Okay, that said, to show you more of the features and what the game has to offer, let's go play the game from the start. Let's go play the game, okay. Here's the character creation, guys. This is where we select the gender, male, female over here, skin tone over here. And how many face types? Up to E. There it goes. Let's preview some of them. There goes C. There goes B. Okay. We can also have hairstyles, of course. Short, curly, medium, and long. Let's do the long hair. Then here's the hair color. Blonde, gray, white, and dark. There's another one. Brown. Then we can have a beard. Thick beard. Let's go. And a mustache. Then there goes our character. Perfect hobo character. Let's name our character. Create. And there goes our character. 1,178 players online. So how do we play the game? Play character. North American server. MMO auto join. Oh. Okay, there it goes. There goes the word. MMO. But of course, we gotta see it. I wanna see the actual game. To see if it's close to being called an MMO. Let's go auto join. And we're in the game, guys. WASD, the movement. There it goes. Can we jump? No, when we press space, what's happening? I'm pressing space. It did something the first time. I think it's on cooldown. Oh yeah, it's on cooldown. Let's wait for it. There it goes. The lower left side. Let's press it again. Space. It's some kind of a step back. What is this? There's a bunch of NPCs over here. I guess we're trapped in a room. So, what do we do here? Talk to Layla Buck. I guess we need to interact with the NPCs with the exclamation mark. Outpost leader. Chief? Okay, basically, when we talk to the NPCs, the quest is auto-accept. How about this one? Mackenzie and McCarthy. Man, I'm trying to talk to this NPC. Okay. Oh, look at this. Somebody playing a level 27 dude. Okay, so the first area is at least we can say it's shared world, right? There's a random player over here. Man, I think he can hear me. <laughs> There's some kind of a proximity chat over here. Let's disable it. <laughs> nah, let's ignore them. Let's go over here. Look at this. There's another player over here, a level 15 dude. Okay, let's go outside. No, this is not outside. Let's go back over there. Way out. There goes the exit behind the starting place. We have a gun. Okay. Let's test out the gun. We have about 60 bullets. Let's go outside. Man, the game is so dark. Okay, so we have a 2x2. Two two. That's a melee weapon. Let's try it out. Okay, let's go back to the gun. Oh, look at this. Enemies outside. Let's try it out. Yo, bro. Come here. It's a zombie. Got him. Are we getting any EXP? This is my quest if I'm correct. Okay, let's try the melee weapon. Let's tap him once. Then melee weapon. Let's go! And I don't like the animation. But it's good enough. Oh, there's a lady zombie over here. Oh my god. Ammunition. 
Oh my god, the reload. <laughs> Still alive, bro. There's a lot of monsters over here. I think I need to go back inside and check what's my quest. I'm liking this game. Yeah, first impression. I'm liking this. And if you're asking me, is this an MMORPG? Yeah, it's getting close to being called an MMORPG. Let's go. I think the main argument here is gonna be how massive it is. It's always that. That's why people don't want to call this MMO. I guess I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research. Yeah, how about let me do that. Go to some subreddits or other forums and check how many players can be in one map. But to be honest with you, even if there's only 20 players per map, I would still call this an MMO. Why? It's because the developers are calling this an MMO. Plus, to me, an MMO is a feeling like when you're in a place, just ask yourself, does it feel like an MMO? And if it does, then it is. And I can see why they're calling this an MMO because it does the minimum. It's shared world. Okay, so how about let me play for a few hours, learn a few things. Okay, so how about let me play the game for a few hours, see what I can learn and show to you guys. See you guys in a bit. Okay, guys, I played the game and the first thing that I did is do one quest. Then I fiddled with the settings and figured out how to create a lobby. And turns out, one instance of the game can only accommodate 8 players. And obviously, it's very far from an MMO. It's super far from an MMO. But after playing the game and interacting and playing with other people, the game does offer the main MMO feature wherein you can see and interact with other players without setting up anything. You log into the game, click press start, and you will spawn on the shared world hub which is the police station. And you will see other players there. Kinda like in most MMOs. There's also an auction or a marketplace wherein you can sell the things that you gathered outside, the stuff you looted. There's also a bank here to put some stuff that you don't want to dump. So yeah, you can go outside, do some quests, see other players doing their own thing. Kinda like in most MMO. So to say the least, this is a game with MMO elements. But I think this should be called a shared world zombie RPG or... A zombie looter shooter with MMO elements. Dead Frontier 2 is very far from an MMO, but it's close enough to be called one. That said, how about let's check out how they make money in this game. Cash up time guys, Dead Frontier 2 monetization. The cash up currency is called credits and 100 credits is about 5 USD. There goes the prices guys. And as you see over here, there's a gold membership monthly for 11 USD. And the benefits are... 100% EXP gained, you find more ammo, you find more fuel, and you have a better chance of getting an elite item, unique item, and you get 50% more inventory capacity. So if you have this, you will progress faster than the other guy who's not buying this. Advantage. And as you can see over here, cosmetics only guys, we can preview some of them. There goes the police costume, you can buy this. There's no stats guys, it's just cosmetics. As you can see, we can preview them. This one looks pretty odd. Okay, so army set, how about let's preview the army set. You can have this, for how much is this? A thousand credits. You can have a leather backpack. Let's check out the leather backpack. There it goes. How much is that? Leather backpack, okay, anyway. You guys get the point, these are all cosmetics only guys. There's no stats. So what else can we buy with the credits? Aside from the membership, I can't really find anything else. According to the guy that I talked to, you can also buy some storage space. But for some reason, I can't find it here. So I can't really vouch for that. So another thing that we can spend credits on is the skill reset. As you can see over here, you will spend 100 credits to reset your skills. Here are the skills, guys. There it goes. You select this as you level up. So I hope you saw what you needed to see. And that's Dead Frontier 2 from the start. If you want to see other horror slash paranormal or shared world RPG, there it goes. Secret World Legends. Leave a like before you go. And this is Game Hardcore. See you in the next one.